This is question number one from a review packet number four. It's from, it's the second question from the 1998 AP Physics B exam. It deals with a uh, plastic ball. It's got a net negative charge. It's hovering away from the wall, which should be a clue that the wall is also charged negative in order to produce that repelling force. So we've got an evenly distributed negative wall, uh, negative charge on the wall. This is uh, going to produce an electric field and the direction of the electric field is actually going to be towards the wall. It's common for uh, uh, students to kind of make that mistake with the electric field uh, because you know we see that the force on the, uh, in this case on the negatively charged particle is moving to the right, but the electric field is drawn uh, to show the force acting per unit uh, pos uh, for a positive test charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that up uh, here. We're going to eventually need that later on on the problem. We can see that the electric, electric field uh, pushes to the left. The first uh, question asks to draw the different forces uh, acting on the object. So we know that there's a repelling force uh, due to the presence of those um, negative charges on the wall that's pushing to the, uh, to the right. There's also a uh, weight force uh, or the force of gravity uh, acting straight down since this occurs on uh, planet Earth. And then I've got a force acting uh, up and to the left. This is the tension due to uh, the um, string being attached to the ball. So I'm going to go ahead and label those. I could call that just capital T for, or F sub T for tension. That's going to be F sub E for the electric force. And uh, the one that's uh, straight down the negative Y axis would be uh, MG. Moving on to the next question, it says calculate the magnitude of the electric field uh, at the ball's Location due to the charged wall and state its direction relative to the coordinate axis shown. So right out of the gate, we know that um, the direction of that electric field is going to be to the left. By definition, uh, the electric field is going to be the force per unit charge. And both of those are given to us in the problem. Uh, the force acting on the plastic ball as well as the charge uh, of the plastic ball. So this makes it pretty easy uh, to solve. I'm just going to plug in the force, which is going to be 0 0.032 newtons. And the charge of the plastic ball is going to be 80 microcoulombs, or 80 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Now, we know that that should technically be negative, but we've already taken into account the direction of the electric field. We know that it's acting to the left, so we don't need to worry about the negative sign because we're only uh, calculating for magnitude. And when we do, we end up getting something on the order of about 400 newtons per coulomb. Since the electric field is a vector, we need to make sure that we do add uh, the direction in this case. Given the sketch in the coordinate system, uh, we know that it's uh, to the left. Okay, so uh, that's our answer for part B. Part C then says, determine the perpendicular distance from the wall to the center of the ball. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of redraw a quick sketch here. Um, so. I'm going to have an xy axis, there's my vertical axis, here's my uh, horizontal axis. And um, the question specifically asks, you know, uh, how far the ball is away from the wall. So I'm going to draw the string, which is basically holding on to the ball here. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, draw the wall. This will additionally be the wall surface right there. And um, we know that the ball is um, hanging on the string. And the string length has a known length. The length was given to us in the problem as 0.3 uh, meters. So um, let's start by writing some equations. These are essentially going to be dynamics equations. Um, we know that the sum of the forces in both the x and the y direction are going to be equal to 0 since the ball is not moving. So in this case, the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be 0. Let's go ahead and um, make some quick sketches of those. I know we did that on the previous one. But we've got an electric force acting to the right. I've got a, a tension force acting uh, on the ball up and uh, to the left. This tension force, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, makes sense to kind of resolve it into its x and y components. So let's go ahead and just draw those as tension in the y direction and uh, tension in the x direction. And what I'm going to do is basically get rid of the unresolved original vector. So we've represented tension in its component form. So I've got some acting up and some acting uh, to the left. I'm going to uh, additionally add the weight vector, which is uh, directed straight down here. So those are the different forces. 
Let's go ahead and make sure that we label them. We've got uh, TY, TX, MG, and F sub E. So we can see that we have four forces. They're all going to cancel each other out and be equal to zero, but it's important for us to write that out in our dynamics equations. In the x direction, I'm going to say that the electric force acting to the right, which is positive, minus the x component of tension, which is acting to the left, is going to be negative, is equal to zero. In the y direction, I can say the, say the same thing, that some of the forces is equal to zero, and so therefore the positive force, in this case y, since it's directed upwards, minus the weight mg is going to be equal to zero. Additionally, uh, I'm going to add uh, Tx to both sides and resolve it into it, its uh, trigonometric form. So this becomes F sub E is equal to T. Now, I would normally choose, choose cosine theta here, but it uh, really depends on what we're going to call uh, theta. In this case, if I want to know that, if I'm going to call that theta, I'm referencing now the y-axis with this angle, which is going to uh, switch around the x and the y um, you know, what, what's typically done here. So Tx will not be T cosine theta, but T sine theta. And we see, we've seen that a bunch of times here in the course already. So I won't take the time to kind of prove that. But basically, F sub E is equal to T sine theta. In the y direction, we'll see that uh, T cosine theta, which is the y component of that uh, tension vector, is equal to mg. We arrive at this point, which we've seen before. We've got two unknowns. We don't know the tension, and we don't know the angle theta. And we have two equations with two unknowns. Everything else is known. The mass is known, the acceleration into gravity on Earth is known, and the electric uh, force is known. It's given to us in the problem as um, 0.032 newtons. And so now uh, I can basically realize that this is a system of equations. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose to solve both equations for t and set them equal to each other and thereby eliminate the t. So in order to do that, I'm going to uh, realize here that t if I divide both sides by sine theta, is going to be the electric force divided by sine theta. And on the right-hand side, solving for t, I'm going to divide both, uh, both sides by cosine theta. So I'm going to get mg over cosine theta. And setting these two equal to each other allows me to basically write a new equation. In this case, F sub e, or the electric force, which is known, divided by sine theta is equal to mg, again, which is known, over cosine theta. I now have only one unknown, which is theta. Um, in this case, I'm going to multiply both sides by sine theta and divide by mg. That's going to basically move sine theta to the right, move mg over to the left. And that basically uh, creates a scenario that looks like this. I've got now F sub e, the electric force, divided by mg, is equal to sine theta over cosine theta sine theta over cosine theta can reduce to just tangent theta and now I can solve for theta by taking the inverse tangent of F sub e over mg which is what I'm going to do so theta in this case uh, is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of F sub e over mg and that's going to be equal to 18 degrees so now I know the angle theta, and uh, I still am not able to answer how far we are away from the wall, but I will be able to now that I have theta. So we know this length, uh, this is the hypotenuse, of course, uh, uh, or the length of the string L is 0.3 meters. I now know this angle, so I'm interested in what this distance is here that I've drawn in purple. That distance I'm going to define as x, which is the opposite side if I'm referencing this angle here, theta. Yeah, so I'm looking for a trigonometric relationship which relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse. That, of course, is sine, which uh, now uh, leads me to the last piece, which is going to be equal to sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is x. Uh-oh, looks like I moved the paper a little bit. Let me erase that. So one, uh, once again, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it's x over the hypotenuse, which is the length, or 0.3 meters. Uh, I'm going to multiply uh, both sides by 0.3 meters and solve for x, and we should get something on the order of about 0 0.093 meters. So now I know that the plastic ball 
is hovering 0 0.093 meters away from uh, the wall. And that's our answer now for uh, part C. Part D then goes on to ask other questions. Calculate the magnitude of the re uh, resulting acceleration of the ball. Um, if the string is cut, we can see that the tension vector, the x and the y components of that tension, uh, are immediately removed. And the only thing that I have uh, left is uh, the electric force acting to the right and the weight acting down. And so basically that means I need to find the resultant of those two forces, uh, which will be our net force. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in here. And uh, I'm going to just arrange this triangle kind of head to tail. Looks I've got a little bit of lag here on my. Uh, just want to move this up. So there's going to be the result. And I'm going to make a copy of this just to show the head to tail relationship. If I move that head to tail, the weight force, so now I have a. Uh, a um, right triangle where the hypotenuse is of interest, that's going to be the net force. And so therefore I can now say that the net force, in this case, the net force squared, this is C, net force squared is going to be equal to the electric force squared plus the weight squared. And so the net force then becomes the square root of those things. And so uh, I get net force is equal to the electric force, which is 0.032. Uh, and that's going to be newtons. I have to remember to square that, and I don't want to forget my square root sign here. And uh, to that, I need to add the weight, which is uh, in this problem, I believe 0 0.1. Let me check that. Yeah, 0 0.01 uh, would be, sorry, the mass, 0 0.01 kilograms. And I'm going to multiply that by the acceleration due to gravity, in this case, uh, 10 meters per second squared. Which is going to be 0 0.1 newtons. I've got to remember that uh, that I need to square that whole term, and when I do, I get a net force of uh, 0.103 newtons. This is kind of an intermediate step. 0.103 newtons, and then uh, once I know that, I can use uh, Newton's second law and say that uh, the acceleration. Oops, is going to be the net force divided by the mass. I've just solved Newton's second law uh, or rearranged it for acceleration and the net force is 0.103, the mass is 0.01 kilograms and I get an acceleration of 10.3 meters per second. Per second. Okay and they want to know the direction relative to the coordinate axis so I need to be careful here. I know that this angle is um, 18 degrees but if I reference the x-axis that's going to be the complement to 18 uh, in this case which would be uh, 72 degrees below the positive x-axis so I could say negative 72 degrees or I could say 72 degrees below the positive x-axis. Either of those is an appropriate way to describe um, the direction. Um, and the resulting path of the ball, it's going to move down and to the right uh, because of that. 